Hey guys, I um, back again to make a Dreamcast video. Uh, there's been some significant changes in the Dreamcast modding community that I want to talk about. As this morning, I just got my hands on uh, Dreamcast HDMI mod. So what happened was, um, I guess I'll start by just kind of showing my Dreamcast. So I have a white one and a black one. And the white one typically lives in my uh, pedestal arcade cabinet, which there's links to the other videos in the description if you want to check that out. And then I also have a black one. And the black one is the one that I like to keep in my entertainment center to play with classic, you know, controller style games. So each of them have different mods done to them. Uh, this white one has what's called a uh, GDMU, and this is actually a clone of the GDMU. Uh, they can be found on eBay for like, I think it was like 60 bucks or something. And then people make these 3D printed inserts. So like up here, it just houses your SD card. And then you've got this button right here that does your uh, game eject since it's not actually using the sensor anymore on the on the lid and then in this one I have what's called a USB GD-ROM and that has a different 3D print and then I just have a USB stick in there so like right now I have a 512 gigabyte stick in there and kind of the pros and cons of this and this is an official USB GD-ROM Kind of the pros and cons of the two is like the GDMU, you get a nicer menu, but then like the USB GD-ROM, there's no slowdown when you have a bunch of games on your storage medium, or if you have a bunch of games on the GDMU's SD card, it will make the loading times when you initially boot up the Dreamcast. People have videos where it's like up to three minutes, depending on how big of a card they have. So this is like, this one is, so this GDMU is like perfect for my arcade cab because I'm using, I'm loading less games on it, but then I have that pretty menu. Where this one, I have more games and I don't care so much about the menu because it's not like it's being used for front end. Another difference is this USB GD-ROM still uses the original uh, 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 hood switch. So when you when it wants you to switch game discs, you actually just pop it open and close it. And both of them support like multi-game or multi-disc games and stuff. So they're both pretty good solutions. Another thing is you'll see when I open this up, when I open them up, the the 3D printout for the GDMU that I have, while it's really nice how it's mounted. It doesn't really keep the airflow the, the same way as it traditionally is in the Dreamcast. But honestly, since I've also replaced the power supplies and I no longer have the optical disk drives in them, I can't imagine they get that hot from just the CPU and the GPU. While the USB GD-ROM insert I have, that does retain the stock cooling. So I'm just going to open them up real quick. And I've already removed the four, the 56K modems and the four screws on the bottom so that they just come apart. When you open them up, you always want to have the lid open because then the lid switch won't uh, get, get knocked down. And this one I'm actually going to pull the USB drive out. And then sometimes... Sometimes the power supply sticks. Okay, so I pulled that out. And now you'll see, let's see, so I've done that one. Now I'll open up this one. This one's a little trickier because you have this extension cable. So that, so this is actually the button that goes and presses on the GDMU. So what you actually have right here is this is the actual GDMU and this extender just goes into the GDMU and then you have your reset button 
which this white thing is actually pushing down on. It's just kind of a white uh, spool. And then I'm just going to, the other thing that happens is the Pico PSU on the Second, it kind of gets stuck in the top lid. So I'm going to take that out. Okay. So now you can see the opening of, you can see both of them open. So USB GD ROM, I've modified it with a third party Pico PSU. Then I Replace the uh, original battery with a easily user replaceable battery because the stock Dreamcast battery is soldered on. This one, you can just pull it out and replace it when you need to. And then this fuse right here, I've replaced on both of them, which is the controller port fuse. So if you hook up like a, either a crappy controller like a non-certified controller sometimes it can blow the, this fuse people debate whether or not they just made the fu stock fuse too sensitive or what but this user there this uh, this is a self-resetting fuse that I put in both of them that allows it to if you blow the, f the controller port fuse you just disconnect power for a couple minutes, plug it back in, it'll start working again instead of having to replace that fuse every time it happens. And I've done, so I've done the battery and the fuse in both of them. And then, yeah, and my, my power stuff is kind of a mess. But I did it all myself, so I don't really feel bad because I didn't sell it to anybody. And then the uh, the fans, I also did this knock to a fan mod where I replaced the stock fan with a brand new fan that's quieter and has slightly better output. So now I'm gonna talk about what happened today. So today, um, there's been a new development where uh, they came out with a thing called the Dreamcast, the DC HDMI. And what it is is the Dreamcast natively outputs uh, VGA, and VGA is a non-standard video format for, for HDTVs. So what we've been doing in the past is there's these boxes by the Behar brothers. The, this one is the Akura and this one's the Gecko. And what they do is they convert the VGA into HDMI and then they spit out to your HDTV. Now the problem with that is the uh, the video format isn't a real TV format, it's more of a computer format. So there's like issues where like the entire picture will shift slightly to the right and some stuff will get cut off. And some TVs you can cycle power on them and it'll fix it, some don't. And so what I've been doing is I've been using these in tandem with a thing called the M cable. And what the M cable is, is the M cable is a video upscaler cable that introduces no leg and does a two to four times anti-aliasing effect. So what it has a USB on it and an HDMI in from the console and the HDMI out to the TV. And what it will do is it actually has a little circuit board inside of it that upscales the content to 1080p and does the anti-aliasing. And with these boxes, what I found that does is that fixes that horizontal shifting. And it also cleans up the noise from the analog signal from VGA. So I found that like the best tandem is having one of these boxes. So like the, the Gecko is a $55 box and the Akura is an $85 box, the big, difference is some of the options as far as like scan line generation. This was kind of the Behar Bros like value pro better value product that they came out with. But but the the big problem with these though is these connectors. These connectors they're very fragile. So like if you want to take your Dreamcast and use one of these connectors and have it in your entertainment center, you have to have like a super deep entertainment center in order to not bend them. 
and when you bend them they're gonna break so the real downfall of these connectors or the real downfall of these adapters is these connectors well what what has come out now is i'm recording this on uh the morning of uh saturday december 8th and there's these two guys uh citrus 3000 psi and christoph who have made a device called the dc hdmi and what it is is it's a uh, printed circuit board that installs inside of your dreamcast and gives you native you know it gives you an, an HDMI connector on the back that then gives you digital video straight from the GPU. So what it'll do is it'll take the GPU's digital signals instead of, instead of intercepting the analog signals like these do, it'll take the digital signal straight off the GPU and it'll go into this board. This board will then output it through mini HDMI on the back of your console. And you can do scaling where you can where you can scale it up to 1080p. So it's a very clean, no noise, very low profile mod where you'll just have a normal HDMI cable coming out the back. So so this morning, Citrus 3000 PSI, he put about 30 of them up for sale on his web store. Last week he had sold 10 as installs that he was going to personally do to make sure everything was right with the ribbon cables and stuff that he bought. But this morning he put 30, uh, 30 kits up for sale on his web store. So he had announced this a couple days ago and happened to be a Saturday morning that I wasn't working. So what I did was I went to, this morning I woke up at about six and I went on shop.danceprojects.com and I installed this Chrome extension called, uh, uh, it's like the, the Distill uh, Web Monitor. And I, what I did was I cranked up the speakers on my PC so that when it went up for sale, I would get like a big notification sound on my PC. And I'm just gonna start putting these Dreamcasts together while I talk. But I, uh, I got this notification, or I set it up so that every time that the web page changed, I would get this big chime on my PC so that I would know when they went up for sale before he tweeted it. And when that happened, I had a few false positives this morning with it, where it like notified me even though it, the website hadn't actually changed, but then, uh, there was one time when it did notify me where it actually did go up for sale. So I was able to purchase two because I had already I already had an account with him and I already had all my PayPal stuff pretty populated. So I was able to purchase two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna package up these Dreamcasts uh, to be modded by a professional modder because there's a video of doing the mod where it looks pretty involved, like it looks beyond my talent to do the mod. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I contacted a guy named uh, uh, Mobius Strip Tech, who he's gonna do the mod for $85 a console, and then I believe I have to pay shipping both ways. And I should say that the the DC HDMI kits are 150 each, so it's not it's not a cheap thing. But when it's done, it's gonna be super cool. So, fortunately, in like the haste of ordering, typically when when you order stuff like this, like the the kits that went up for sale today, they sold out in less than a minute. So it's pretty nuts that I was able to make any decisions during checkout, but I was able to choose the priority shipping without issue. So I should get the kits pretty quick. And when I do, I'm, I talk to Mobius Strip Tech and he's gonna do them for $85 each. And I'm gonna immediately ship them off to him. And then he said that I pay upon completion of the mod. But the other thing I wanted to show you is I have these boxes and these are actually conference room phone boxes that I got from work and what I did with these boxes was 
I cut out the foam to exactly fit the Dreamcast. So I'm gonna take my Dreamcast, put them inside these bags, and then I'm gonna put them inside the foam. And then up top, I'm going to package the DCHD in my kit, and then I'm gonna ship these two boxes off. And when I get them back, I'll probably make another video showing you uh, what the final product is like. But it should be pretty cool. So, yeah, so that's the big advancement in Dreamcast right now. So, so the current state of my Dreamcast is you have a brand new power supply that has puts off like no heat. You have a you have a self-resetting controller port fuse, so that solves the problem of blowing your controller ports. You got an easily uh, user resettable battery. You have an optical drive emulator, so you don't have to worry about discs, and you can just boot games off of a, off of you know an SD card or a USB drive. You got a a, a larger, quieter fan in both of them. And now you're gonna have native digital 1080p output over HDMI. So, should be pretty cool. I'll uh, definitely post uh, links in the description and have a follow-up video when I receive it all completed. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and at least found it interesting.